You can hear me, it's just not very loud. Oh, well, I'll talk louder, how's that? <laughs> okay, so you know I have some cards to share, always. So this one here, this is from uh, the Make a Card, Send a Card, which mine just got mailed out today. So anyhow, <laughs> um, this is Be Happy with this cute, cute paper. I think, well, I think, it, no, yeah, I think it's paper because it's all, the little wings are glitzy, glittery. And I love that honeycomb back there. And we had in this one, there was a uh, little a strip of designer series paper. Yay, you know me with those scraps, right? Yeah, so I'm just talking louder uh, where I think the um, microphone thing is that's being used. This here is from Diane Harriet. Cute, cute paper, trick or treat. She has a fun little fold card there. I like that paper. A little designer paper there. This one here is from Jessica. I like how she cut the blueberries out to make it more dimensional and simply thankful for all the good things. So there's that. This one here was from Gloria Hinkins and it is a stand up. A little easel card. Now I know like things like um, um, Stamps of Life or other other places actually have um, dies that will create these for you but it's easy also just to as you can see that she did is to take your cardstock and you're going to do some um, cutting of certain measurements. Maybe I will ask Gloria to send me the measures of how she did that and I can share that. This is a super cute one from Bonnie. The dog all wrapped up like a mummy. She is a real dog person. She loves dogs. She um, has a walk, dog walking. She was doing dog walking for a long time for people. So very, very cute. So we have a couple people. Oh, hers is not a window. Interesting. She masked hers off. Nice. That's great. Now I did notice you guys that some of you are sending um, the envelopes along with your cards and I feel awful because I have not been doing that. Now it doesn't mean that you have to do that, right? That's not that's not part of the make a card, send a card deal, but um, it's something I might think about to start doing, right? It's like, oh my goodness. Um, I haven't thought to do that at all. Okay, how we doing? Okay, well, first thing I wanna share with you guys before we get stamping is that I have my cafe coins. This is that began this month, October with Stampin' Up's New Year. And you know what? My, um, whoa, hold on. My um, camera is like slanted. And so I wanna try to fix that. There we go, that's much better. Um, but it's Mary's Cafe Coins, and when you place a minimum $25 order with me online or in person, you win, you get, win, sorry, you get one cafe coin, and when you collect 20 coins, you can get $35 free anything, okay? Um, and sometimes I'll do um, double cafe points, and well, October is one of those, where for every $25 you spend, you get two coins, um, instead of one coin and so that's a great thing and since it's the first month of Stampin' Up! Sheer I thought I would share that with you and you'll get double coins. How fun is that? Okay, well I think I am going to start with a sneak peek for my Stamp at the Cafe um, on October 15th, Saturday, October 15th. I'm starting back on my monthly um, just monthly card making where you can come and make some projects and share each other's company and uh, go home with some fun cards. This is the He's the Man designer series paper out of the annual catalog. 
it's an interesting one because it comes with two sheets of these fun little pop-outs that are great for instant card making. So there's duplicate sheets, there's two of them. That's really fun, but unfortunately for me, if I wanted to do, say, a project for a group of people, I couldn't really do it that way. But um, that is just really fun. I love this car right here. And then there is the beautiful 12 by 12 paper, crushed curry, and I love this one here with the pig, with the cows and the pigs for barbecuing. It is so fun. What they wanted to do this time is they didn't want to have just the typical, you know, typical cars, you know, kind of thing. Um, there's just some nice, rich, darker colors and designs. There's kind of this argyle here on this one. And then we've got kind of the camping and outdoors, which is really nice. And that little camper is so much like the tree lot dies from Celebration. And then some more like that. And then of course, then we do have our cars. Um, that's why I didn't see the car paper in there because we're actually gonna use it today. And we are gonna use it on Stampin' at the Cafe on Saturday the 15th, so anybody local can check out my events at maryblocker.stampinup.net and see my events. And so Stampin' at the Cafe is always on a Saturday and it is usually the third Saturday of the month, I'm gonna say, um, is when I'm going to do those. And they are at 11 o'clock. They used to be at 10 o'clock, but you know, to get up and to get myself together and then feed my husband dinner, right? You guys know um, that's the case there. So He's All That is the stamp set that coordinates with the suite of products. I, of course, love this happy birthday to a classic. Uh, my husband and I, we love going to car shows and things like that, so that's great. To the Man Who Does Everything, that is a great one too. And then we have coordinating dies that are kind of perfect size for the circles. This one here, the scallop circle is perfect. There's this little one that's like kind of an oval here that'll go ahead and do that right there. We have a nice tag here. And then we have these little dies here that are for, you know, like the little, little banner flags that you can put under a sentiment. Um, and, and make it like just more interesting. These are pretty cool too. So we are gonna use those. So let's see what I have in here. All right, we are using crushed curry on this card today. And I have a piece of early espresso. Ooh, I did not fold my card very well, look at that. I didn't score it. Like I usually will score with my scoring blade, but I just folded it. And that always happens when I just fold my card. Sorry, I got some gunk right there. Oh, Becky, still having trouble here? Oh, no, that was back. That was earlier. Huh. Becky, did it get any better for you? So that's cut at five and a quarter by four and a quarter, basic, um, a basic layer. And then this one's cut at five. By actually, I actually did it a little bit differently. This one is cut at five and like ooh, right next to it to the f three and almost four, just because I didn't want a I didn't want a big early espresso border. So that's going to go for the inside of the card. All right. So now you see what I'm doing here. We've got some crushed curry, and then my early espresso. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these two together. And I love this crumb cake on the back, and I love the design of this crumb cake. So we're gonna let that definitely show. Now, when you come to my stamp at the cafe, I'll usually have three or four projects. It's a $10 fee or free if you place an order between the first and the Wednesday before the, the week of the stamping. And then it's free. 
Now I have a diamond or a triangle here that I cut and I want to tell you how I cut this. So there's a couple ways. I did mine a little bit smaller because I'm actually going to have it just be like this and I'm not going to go right to the edge to cover it up. I want it just to be kind of an interesting, an interesting accent. So my piece is cut at three and a half by three and a half, okay? And then I cut it on the diagonal. If you want it to come all the way to the edge for the width of the card, you would just want your square to be whatever length this is. So this particular designer series paper was three and three quarters across. So if I did this square three and three quarters, this would come all the way to the edge, but I'm okay with it not because like I said, I want it to be just an interest on the card. But getting that diagonal is really easy. If you take your paper and your trimmer, you simply um, put one corner to the cutting edge and then line up the other to the cutting edge. And then you just go ahead and, and then you'll have your two triangles. This really works well if you're gonna do some diagonals to use a pattern that doesn't have a direction. Like if you were gonna try to do these cars, what's gonna happen is when you do a diagonal on it, half of the cars will be upside down when you go to place it. So just kind of think about that. <laughs> I decided to use this. Um, I just love the pattern of it and the crumb cake is my kind of color. I just think that is so pretty. So pretty. And like I said, I want this to be, I want this to come out just a little bit, about the same distance between the espresso and the designer series paper, just for another little layer of something that's an interest, okay? There we go. Already looking kind of fun, huh? All right, let's take out a couple of these. I'm gonna use this guy. This is a perfect, perfect um, just accent piece, right? And then got my things already out and I have Early Espresso and Cajun Craze inks and I'm going to stamp Cajun Craze for the happy birthday to a classic. And I'm just going to stamp, just make sure it's going to stamp well. And ooh, that's pretty. Yes, I like that. Then I'm going to use... espresso to do this little number one. Now there is no die for that number one. Let me make sure of that. Yep, there's no circle, but we should have a circle punch in your arsenal <laughs> for that. And then see how perfect that happy birthday fits in that circle. It's just so good. So I'm going to tear this because I'm also going to grab a piece of this because I'm going to do that in the espresso. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. So our happy birthday to a classic. And the circle right there, the arc for that happy birthday is so good. I love it. Now remember, I'm gonna go ahead and let my top plate be a little extended so it easily goes through the machine. If you ever have trouble with your mini, just remember, have the top plate go ahead of the bottom plate a little bit, or just tilt it, tilt your whole um, 
your whole sandwich, instead of going in perfectly straight, just give it a little tiny tilt and have a corner go through first, and it's perfect. It will be perfect for you. So let's go ahead and we'll do this guy right here. Don't have to worry too much about lining that up, huh? Yeah, it's a perfect time right now, like getting uh, if you don't have any of the die cutting systems and you're wanting to do, oh, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> Let me just put it over here. Say you don't have the stamp and cut and emboss machine or the mini, that kind of thing. Now's a great time. There's a joining special in October. It's usually $125 of merchandise that you pick, whatever you want. And then you get, uh, you, you only pay $99. Well, for the month of October, it's jumping up to $155 of free product. And that is awesome. I mean, think about, you can get yourself your mini stamp and cut and emboss machine, Get it in a bundle where you um, get the stylish shapes or one of the other die sets or get yourself the standard machine and you can get yourself some dies as well. Now that's free shipping and you get a free paper pumpkin you get catalogs and things. Isn't that fun just having that out, um, sticking out a little bit? So there is that. And then we are going to, you know, I might have to just stamp my number one inside because I don't have my little circle punches right behind me in the drawers. They are actually somewhere else. Now I want to watch when I glue this down because I didn't do a normal quarter inch layer on this. Oh, I have a brand new refill in my stamp and seal oh, and it just glides so nice. I love it. All right, not done. We have some of these great rustic metallic gems, which are perfect for the gentlemen in our lives. Whoops, one went running away. Let's see if we can get it to come off now. <laughs> oh, I don't even think, I don't think it, it doesn't have its adhesive, Never mind. No good, didn't have its adhesive. Let's put a large one right here. Let's put a little one here. Oh, so cute. We'll put another little one right down here. And there we are. Cute, huh? Let's open up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna stamp inside, number one. Since I don't have my punches right out, my little punch, that I can line up for that. So there we are. Now I think I maybe sh should have lifted that up a little bit. I, I kind of put it down. I don't necessarily like to put things right in the center of a card. I tend to go down a little bit or up a little bit, but I just really like that triangle of that crumb cake in there. I think it just kind of breaks up all those cars because that's a lot of pattern with the cars, right? So yeah. So there's that cute He's All That bundle. And then showcasing a little bit of the designer paper. That backs, this designer piece right here is the back side of the cars. And there we are. So that's a little sneak peek. That's one of the projects for um, the stamp and chat at the cafe on the 15th. So there's a little sneak peek for those of you that are local or thinking about wanting to come to the, to the, um, 
Stampin'. We're going to do three cards on that Saturday, and then there's going to be a like a little 3D like pouch kind of thing. Thank you for saying that's a nice masculine card. It's um. Sorry, you guys. Now I have ice in my mouth. It's a nice set. <laughs> Hold on. It's a nice masculine set because it's not just stuck on one thing like the tools, right? Um, that kind of thing. You have the nautical, and you've got kind of like an kind of an anniversary thing here for going and camping, and just different things. So it's a good one. It is a good one. All right, I have another sneak peek for you guys. This happens to be and going to be one of the projects that's going to be at my holiday stampa stack. Now my holiday stampa stack is going to be on November 5th, Saturday, or November 6th, Sunday in the afternoon. You choose which day you're coming to. The projects are the same both days, but it's just that I only have uh, room for eight in my workshop room, so everybody stays, you know, a little distance and what have you. And so my holiday stamp -a stack usually um, has many participants, and so I offer two different op options. So that's uh, in November, November 5th or 6th, and on that one we do 12 holiday projects, two each of six different designs, and then I always have some sort of bonus, I'll have some sort of bonus project as well. Well, the Joyful Flurry is... Um, really really a neat set and the thing that it gets really interesting and you don't even know it has to do with these uh, snowflakes the snowflake dies you have the outline dies that you use for your snowflakes that you stamp but then you also have all of these other standalone snowflakes what's interesting is that not all of the snowflakes cut out fully from the paper and I'll show you what I mean let's see okay so I'm gonna be having a video my Stampin Saturday video where I'm gonna show you these wait a minute examples of how some of these snowflakes punch out so here is one of them right here and that was this die, this snowflake die right here. So it doesn't cut completely out of the paper. Okay. So that's really an interesting concept. That's the same with this, this one and this one, as well as this one right here. They don't fully come out of the paper. So very interesting, huh? So I have my Stampin' Saturday video that you're able to see on YouTube that will show you the different, the different ones. Here's another example right here. And then here's an example right here of two of them. But just think about how you could take this one now and just put a sentiment right there and how neat that could be. Do a little wink of Stella on, this, on the certain ones, have some of them pop up a little bit. So it's a very interesting um, die set and you'd be a little bit, I don't know, disappointed maybe or not thinking, how do I don't even know how to use this and then you might get a little frustrated. So um, hopefully that video on Saturday will help see how cool, actually really cool these are. Yeah, I'm not sure if you'll like it. Well, you'll have to, oops, you'll have to see um, my video on Saturday to see what you think about that. So, going to be using the Joyful Flurries, and oh my goodness, you guys, I have to share this with you. This is the Snowflake Vellum Designer Series paper. Here's one of the sheets. They're 12 by 12, but obviously I've cut this up because I'm using <laughs> I'm using um, this piece for the project I'm doing. But it's beautiful, isn't it? And then I love how it, it takes on the purples and different colors. Then you have in this 12 by 12, you've got the really pretty silver circles, and this is all vellum. 
And it's a pretty thick vellum because you can't even see my hand underneath. Oh, there's another of this one. But the snowflakes are a little different. It has different snowflakes than the one I just showed you. Then we have, this is really cool, we have the fuzzy snowflakes. The flocking, really pretty. Has all that great texture to it. Then we have some dots that are all flocked, so it's like snowing. And then another piece of the beautiful snowflakes that are all flocked. So in this particular one, there are not any repeat pages. It's all one sheet of the designs. So just really, really pretty. That vellum. Okay. Oh, let me get to my project. All right. The other thing that we have that came back, these were in last year's holiday catalog. We have our little uh, delicate snowflakes, our shimmery snowflakes. Those are back. So those, I always liked those. All right. So what do I have here? I have a thick piece of basic white, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. Then I have a piece of Pacific Point. This one I have cut smaller than a normal layer. This is five by three and three quarters. And then this one is three and a half by four and three quarters. And that's just how easily that's going to go together. And it's just stunning. It's just so beautiful. And you can see the, the Pacific point underneath the vellum. It's just kind of is like a dark, like a dark shadow underneath. So I like that the, it's peeking out there. So I know I can put my tape anywhere will I, where I have my vellum snowflakes whoops it's so slippery there we go and i'm not gonna see the ink and then i know i can put a little bit more a bit down because i am gonna have a strip going across there we are very nice okay so we have our beautiful, beautiful sparkly snowflake. Just look at how nice that sits on it. That is so great. That one's going to go right, like right here. Then this piece is going to come right here and cut that snowflake in half. <laughs> And I'm going to have this one going all the way. Hold on a second. When you guys put in a new um, stamp and seal, make sure you clean your old one so it doesn't get all gunky. Because you can see it like sticks everywhere. So that's going to go right across like that. And yes, it's too long. I'm okay with that. I'm just going to come in and clip off those ends. Ugh, there we go. Did a little, little oopsie there. Okay. Then I have these cute white ones that, uh, white snowflakes that I die cut. out. I'm going to use my liquid glue. These are the, there, there's two dies of the same snowflake, which makes die cutting out really quick and easy. And they do cut all the way out, which is nice. Now I'm not quite sure on this third snowflake, you guys, where I'm going to put it. Do you see? Oh, the camera is showing how rainbow that vellum snowflake is. Um, yeah, there's only one sheet, but B, there is another sheet just like this one, but the snowflakes are just different. So there's two sheets that are like this with different snowflakes, but it has the same 
type of rainbowy shimmery so to speak yeah okay so now what I need to do you guys is I need to do my sentiment and I'm going to use this larger one that comes with the dies there's also this smaller banner right here but I'm going to use the larger one and I'm looking for my blank piece of paper here it is thank you very much all right because I'm not quite yet ready to set that other snowflake and let's see what is my stamp I'm using I've got two today for this one I've got it's a season of magic and wonder and then the inside's going to say sending you all the best this new year and wow that's crooked <laughs> either that's crooked or my labels crooked I'm gonna go with the labels crooked I don't know about you guys, but when I try to put the labels on my my stamps, ugh, half the time I don't get them straight. It just bugs me. Okay, and then we're using our Pacific Point ink. Now at the Holiday stamp stack we may be using uh, Midnight Madness, which is a deeper blue. It was one of our in colors. It's a season of magic and wonder. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to stamp the inside of the card. Sending you, let's see if I'm straight here. Nope. Let's fix it. Let's go up a little bit. Now let's see. Use your lines on your grid paper. Yeah, see? Woo! My stamp, my greeting is crooked, so I can't look at my greeting. I have to just make sure my block is lined up straight. Ah, see, so there's ways around it, but uh, you know. And then I have this beautiful little vellum strip right here. And I'm just gonna put that right at the bottom and I'm just gonna tick some glue where I have the snowflakes, the top, Ooh, nah, I'll do it here. There we go, just a little glitzy inside. All right, now let's set everything aside, you guys, because I'm gonna have to die cut out that sentiment. I couldn't have that uh, die cut already. <laughs> It'll never have been stamped straight if I stamp it afterwards. Just saying. It just never works. If it does, it's amazing. But I like these um, these tags. I like that they are have the angle on the ends. I think that just adds a little bit more fun and interest. There we are, isn't that pretty? Has all those little dots along the edge. That's what I really like about a lot of the dies now. They just have that little decorative edge, just of the little dots can add so much. Okay, let's move that aside. We are just about done with card number two. <laughs> We're a small group today, guys, aren't we? All right. Ooh, I bent that snowflake a little bit. So this is going to go right here. And I'm trying to decide if I should raise it up with dimensionals or just let it be flat and have the snowflakes. Oh, I think it needs to be raised up. I think I answered my own question, you guys. Just needs some more dimension. Yeah, so holiday stamp a stack. Uh, I just love creating for that. What I really want to do this year is last year we had done these little wooden ornaments of, um, and I'm going to have it come over to the side. I don't want it right in the center. Oh, that is not straight. That's better. 
So then my third snowflake can go right there. Okay. Yeah, so last year we did an ornament was a snowman and then it attached to a card to give it like to a, as a gift, a card and a, a little gift. And it was fun because we could color it in with our Stampin' Blends and everybody liked that. So there is a sneak peek of a project for the Holiday stamp -a stack That'll be one of them. We make two of each. And that's still crooked, but I'm okay. <laughs> but what's nice about when you come to my um, stamp -a stacks all of your supplies are all cut. Everything's all handled and put in an envelope for you, except pretty much your stamping. And like this particular one here, um, either you'll get it already stamped and in your envelope, or that's one thing you'll have to stamp and die cut. I try really hard on those events, because you're making 12 cards, is that you don't have um, way too much to do. It's kind of like our shoebox box. And I'm sorry, it's not finished. I remembered. I'm thinking, why does it look so strange? And it looks so strange just because I don't have my rhinestones in the center of the snowflakes. Hello. We have to have bling and bling and bling. Those snowflakes just look so plain. But look at them now. There we go. Woohoo. Yeah, the snowflake vellum paper. Oh, so nice. So, yeah, so look for my Stampin' Saturday video, you guys, on YouTube. I'll be doing um, all about this particular bundle with the dies and the other dies. And then I'll be creating projects to show you, you know, what it could look like when you, you use those snowflake dies that don't come out all the way. So, yeah, so sneak peek for those of you thinking about maybe joining in on the... Holiday stamp a stack. Um, it's it's only for locals. Unfortunately, it's not something that I do to go um, for people on that particular one. Well, just because I can't do any of the stamping, I can't stamp any images and mail them out to you. That's against uh, Stampin' Up's rules and regulations. Um, and so you would have to substitute out, or you would have to have those um, stamp sets, and you'd have to have those colors and everything. So it's just too hard. So there we go, there's card number two. What do you guys think so far, you like them? <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm gonna share one more thing with you here before I do our last card. And this is the in color, some of the in color, the new ones, some of the products I had just, I don't know, when they came out I didn't get, I, I got the stamp pads and I got the inks, I got the papers, but I didn't get the Stampin' Right markers. So here are the Stampin' Right markers of our new in colors. Yes, and then there's a package of the beautiful, look how fun those are, Baker Twine. I like those. And then look at the glitz and glimmer of this ribbon. Do you see all that glitz and glimmer? How beautiful is that? I can see with this one here, I can see such great holiday things happening with that paper right there, with that ribbon right there. The camera is not showing or doing justice on these, but they are gorgeous. So <laughs> there was the this one paper pumpkin called Celebrating the In Colors. And I showed you a card that uh, somebody had done and sent to me um, on that. They do still have kits of that paper pumpkin right there. And they do have refills too. So if you did have this paper pumpkin and you really liked it, you could just order the refill. Um, if you are not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber and you might want that particular kit, you can um, join Paper Pumpkin for, a, for you know, do a, a month to month. And you could go in and order any of the past kits, any of the refills, any past kits that are still available. Um, and that's uh, one way that you could do that too. So that brings me to my In Color Club. Last year I offered the uh, In Color Club when the new ink colors came out. And what you would do is each month, this is gonna run October through February, each month by the third of the uh, 15th of each month, you order one set of the ink colors, the cardstock, the stamp pad, the refill, the blends, and the ribbon, and it comes to 39.25. You do that for five months for each of the colors, and then you will, um, 
Oh, sorry. You will um, then choose out any free stamp set that you would like, and you're going to get the in color matte dots free. Um, so it's kind of, it has rewards, and you earn your cafe coins. Oh, no, guess what? There is no cafe coins earned on this because you're getting the free stamp set and the in color dots. You're already getting rewards. Sorry. So, anyway, you can check that out. I have a blog about my in color club. Um, so, you can check that out. I just wanted to share that with you since I'm starting that up. People liked it last year, and so I thought I would do it again. All right. Well, here we are, you guys. Project three. Somebody had asked me whether it was Kathleen or Cheryl asked me to do something with the cheerful basket. And remember, I didn't have it. Well, guess what? I ordered it. I ordered the cheerful basket, and I went on print Pinterest, and I saw a lot of people doing things with it and doing the basket, and and somebody put a gnome in the basket. A lot of people were putting the kitty cat in front of the basket and stuff. And so I was thinking about this and I pulled in the Hello Harvest stamp set as well. So we're gonna use both the Cheerful Basket and the Hello Harvest. I love the designer series paper in the Harvest, um, the Rustic Harvest. I especially love these two pieces right here. I love that beautiful mossy meadow swirls and this crushed curry. Just love, 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 love them. So very easy. This was a base card, five and a half by four and a quarter, uh, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then the top layer was simply folded back on itself. This card was inspired by Bunny Bee's sister. Um, at our shoebox swap. She had done um, a card and she then taped her flap back, but we're not going to tape our flap back. That's one way to do it. Um, I decided that I wanted to do it um, as a pullout card. Let me move these stamps. I don't want them to get ink on what we're doing right now. Okay. So I have some things already cut and done. So this is simply going to get glued down on this flap. Um, this ends up being a two inch piece of cardstock strip here. So it's I did a one and three quarter strip there by um, this was five and a half. So it would be five and a quarter long. Yeah, and that pretty too. That's just black and white. Oh, lovely. So that's going to go there. I think not too long ago I did another something that had a pullout like this. I don't quite remember what it was. I don't know if it was with the gnomes or what I did. Do you think I'd be organized in like projects I do for live? I oh, Okay, did I not cut that right? It's a little bit long. I'll just go with it. Okay. And then we have our piece for the inside. So that's just going to get put down on the inside here. I usually would not put my sheet down on the inside if I'm doing some stamping on it, but I don't know that I'm doing any stamping on it. I think I'm just using the little flowers that I did. Okay, and then I have a layered piece here. This one is cut, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, that's a metric, so it's like, oh, I don't know. Um, but I think it's three and up. Oh, I'm going to have a blog or I'll post my measures on what it is. But I need, knew I needed it to be big enough for the basket, big enough for my flowers. And we're going to talk about this kitty cat. All right. So I want to show you guys a little something here. But I need, and I know I have it. There we go. I needed another piece. So I have a piece of cardstock here, and I'm just going to set the card aside. So I want to talk about Stampin' Up's masking paper. You know, whenever we mask, we, you know, grab a post-it note or something so we can mask. Sorry, you guys, I already have them out on the, here's the kitty cat, here's my florals, and here's my basket. Okay, so I am going to stamp the florals for you. And what I want to do is I'm, I want my kitty cat to be behind the flowers, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just stamp the flowers. This is from the Rustic Harvest. Aren't those pretty? It's the sunflowers. 
It's this stamp right here. I know the kitty's so cute. I love kitties. My kitty went to the vet today and he probably got from Freddy when Freddy stayed with us because he was a stray. Um, he had ear mites and a little infection in his ears and I knew something was up. But Stampin' Up's um, masking paper, 12 pieces come with it. And here's what's nice about it. You know on a post-it note, you only have that one little strip of adhesive. This whole piece of masking paper is adhesived, which is great. I'm telling you, it's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it again. This time I'm going to stamp it on the masking paper. And you know what? I already messed up. I have to go the long way, or I'm not going to be able to show you what I want to show. I, I, did, I stamped the flowers too, too far up. So there we go. Okay. I'm trying to put the, pad, the lid of the stamp pad on a stamp. Okay, you guys, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time here. All right, so I am going to die cut out my masked... Flower. I'm calling it the masked flower because it will actually go lay on. Wait a minute. I need the die, don't I? Wait a minute. There we go. And I don't even care that I smeared it. It wasn't dry yet, but I don't care. This is just going to be thrown away anyway. It's a mask. All right. So now you see I have the mask of the, okay, thank you very much. That's on the masking paper, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my little picky thing here and I'm gonna come and you see how I just kind of pulled it apart just like that. And now it's almost like adhesive sheet, which is really interesting because, ooh, what, no, what did I do? <laughs> I stamped on the wrong side. This is sticky. You gotta make sure you stamp on the side that you're supposed to, but it doesn't matter. Oh no, I just ripped it. Oh, now it's a mess. You guys, what did I do? Oh, let me do that again. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me make sure. Okay, this is the sticky side. All right. I'm sorry. Let's do that again. Nobody makes mistakes, right? <laughs> there are two sides. You want to stamp on the correct side. That's why my image bled. Mary. Oh. Take two. It'll be quick. Come here, guy. <laughs> so what you guys been watching on TV? Anything exciting? We watched Hocus Pocus 2. We had a watch party, my daughters and I. Oh, hey, Sherry. Hey, Lynn. <laughs> Sorry, I hadn't looked. I hadn't seen you guys. Sherry and Lynn, hi. Nice to have you guys here. All right, there we go. Now let's figure this out here. Goodness gracious. All right, so now... Let me get my little tool again. Should have, should have known, and it comes apart so nicely. Should have known when my image smeared that I had it on the wrong side. All right, now my flowers are sticky. Now this is my suggestion. You're gonna wanna get it unsticky a little bit because it's actually pretty sticky. Because I don't want it to rip when I peel it up. So here we go. So now I've covered my flowers almost perfectly, not quite. And now I can put the kitty wherever I want him to be. 
let's say I want him poking out over here. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp. And there he is, right on top of that mask that we made. And when I take this away now, he is peeking out of the flowers. Okay, very, very cute. Now here's the deal. That's great to mask him, but what if you wanna cut the flowers out? Well, if you use your dye and cut the flowers out, the kitty is not gonna go with it, right? This is simply, if you're gonna keep it like this, color your flowers, and then maybe you do your basket and your basket stands up, right? And you could go ahead and use dimensionals on your basket that you die cut out. But I wanted to show you how to use your masking paper. And it is nice that the whole thing is adhesive. You get 12 sheets because I know when you're using a post-it note, well, one, post-it notes are a little bit thicker. This is very, very thin, which is great. Um, I could do a little draw right there with marker um, to get the rest of his little thing right there. It looks like it's missing, but... There we go, so that's using that. We are not going to do that end because I want to die cut out my flowers, which I already did, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink up the kitty cat and I'm gonna decide where I want my kitty cat to be. In my kitty cat, again, I want him over here Okay, and now my flowers, they're going to be here, but they're going to be raised up with dimensionals. And there's the kitty poking out of the flowers, right? So now I have to think about my basket. And I'm using my uh, tuxedo black ink because I am going to use my Stampin' Blends and my, my basket is going to go right down to the edge. There it is. So that looks kind of funny, doesn't it? <laughs> but it'll be totally fine because the flowers are going to come here and cover that up. Right? Okay. So I have some crumb cake, light and dark. I'm thinking, and I have the soft suede, but I'm just wondering if things are going to be a little bit too dark with the soft suede. So I, I just kind of brought it over. See how dark that is? I think I want to go with the crumb cake. So I'm going to go with the lighter crumb cake. And I, the Stampin' Blends, you can color so fast with the Stampin' Blends. They just glide and slide for you. So if you don't have lots of Stampin' Blends, think about joining that In Color Club of mine because you can get one pair of the blends for that new in color that you'll purchase each month and then you'll have five sets of them yeah the new in colors are really great they're nice and bright all right then I'm gonna go in with my darker along here ah, I'm just gonna keep going this way see how nice and they just slide and glide right along. Oh, I just love it. Not using them to blend colors right now at all. Just using them to color. Very nice. Now the kitty cat, I thought the kitty cat might be neat in a rusty color. Let's see. That is pretty dark. Oh, kitty. That's really dark. All right. Little kitty, kitty's gonna be a, kind of a tabby. It's so funny, the vets today, because my kitty cat went in for the first time, we had all his paperwork from, you know, Eastern Washington, when it was my with my daughter. And um, we're like, oh, he's a big cat. We're like, yep, <laughs> for sure. I'm just gonna go ahead in with the light crumb cake and then because I used the 
cinnamon cider. It's working out pretty good for the kitty, huh? <gasps> Isn't he cute? He's really cute. So let's grab our flowers real quick. I've got our light and our dark daffodil delight. I'm gonna use the dark on the inside of these flowers. And I'm gonna use the dark on these little, whatever you wanna call them, the little poofies. And then we've got some lines here that I'm just gonna go ahead quickly. Go around. Now with the light daffodil delight, I'm gonna just kind of come in here and finish going around the flowers. It's amazing to me, you can just kind of go run right along with our, and I am really not being super careful, you guys. I am just getting in here, letting the marker slide and glide. There we go. I think the light can do these guys too. There's a few, couple of those. Then you come back in with your dark, deepen those back up and around the edge there with the little lines. Just give some more dimension. Then we come in with our light and dark old olive. I'm gonna go ahead with the light old olive. I don't know why I'm using my pen part. I might want to use the pen part for the little leaves. That would make sense. I tend to always go for the brush tip. I don't know why. How about you guys when you use your Stampin' Blends? Do you switch and use your, your thin point and your brush point depending upon the size of what you're coloring? How much does my... They never le le leaves lines when you color them. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome for showing them at the paper. Um, boy, Nini, I don't know. I'd have to ask my husband how much he, he ended up weighing. Whoa, that's really dark. That dark is dark. Oh, oh, I was just going to go in for some lines. I'll do a little of these dots so we can have a little some little darkness. Everybody needs a little darkness in their projects, right? Okay, how easy was that? And look how cu darn cute that is. What? See, I didn't I didn't color the handle um, cuz it's getting covered up. So, <laughs> all right, let's get our dimensionals. Uh, my kitty cat is a big boy. He's just a little over a year. Um but I don't know. He got weighed today, definitely. But he is. His daddy was a big old barn cat. I never saw what his daddy was. His mommy is a Siamese, really pretty Siamese. She just had another litter. And finally, Samantha's best friend, their family moved, took the mommy with them, and no more barn owl, or bar, barn cat, sorry. Um, Oh, see, that's cute, 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 cute. Um, and the, I mean, the, neither cat belonged to them, but of course the first time the mommy cat was pregnant, they took her in. But anyway, she just had another litter of nine kittens, okay, nine, half of them completely black, the other half completely white with the exception of one that had the brown tips on the ears like the mom. Strange, huh? Just crazy. But she's, you know, not, she was not a big kitty. She was petite, pretty petite. And I think that was like her third litter. It's like the poor thing. Uh huh. Oh, look at that. That's cute. All right, so now I have the hello. It's awfully big. It's not going to fit there. 
Uh-huh. Inspired by you. That's weird. <laughs> That's a weird sentiment. Oh, you are missed. I don't like that one either. Let me look at my greetings. Greetings, greetings, where are you? Oh, hello you from Shaded Summer, you guys. Hello you. There's thank you. Eh, I wanna do hello you. Doesn't quite fit on the block, but whatevs. And we are not done yet. Hello, you. <laughs> because I cut out five, what is it? Five little flowers, you guys. I was gonna have them colored already and I didn't. But I think it's so cute. You don't have to have um, you don't have to have bling all the time. You can use these cute little stamped things. How cute are they? And watch how fast we can color them. Yeah, you know, with the stamp and blend, you're right. When you, when you do the lines in the dark and then you go over with the light, it's like the lines don't stay. It's because you're blending those colors in, right? And so I always go back and put those darker lines back in. It's like, get back in there. I want to see those dimensions. There we go. Cute, cute. We're going to put one down here because that's just cuteness. Let's turn them over. See how the, the blends bleed right through? So if you're ever going to do um, stamp and blends coloring, you have to mount it on something. So if, like if you wanted to try to do something in the envelope, <laughs> Don't do that because it's gonna bleed right through the envelope. Then we're gonna need another flower. I hope I'm on the screen still, you guys. Sometimes I forget to look up and I could be making my project somewhere totally else. There's gonna be one there when you open it up because that's darn cute. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be one there because it's cute. And there's gonna be one in here right here because it's darn cute oh, I still have two more but let's see what else Shaded Summer says hello you some friendships are just meant to be hey you happy birthday hey hello you love you friend ah some friendships are just meant to be right Da, 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 da. Almost done. We're almost done. Did I stay in the hour? Oh my gosh, six minutes. Really? Oh, that is not straight. Yeah, looks pretty good. Oh, it did. It did. It did. All right, there it is. Hello, you. Some friendships are just meant to be. I could put another one right up here next to that one. I will. And then I will lay out all three. I'm going to ask you which was your favorite. And I did this project just for whoever it was, Kathleen, Cheryl, I can't remember quite who. I think it was Kathleen that said, hey, could you do something with that? Sure, I don't have it though. And then isn't it funny, Linda? You had it for the swap. <laughs> <laughs> okay remember that sneak peek for stamping at the cafe on the 15th gotta reserve your space three people are already reserved guys so i only take up to eight and then hey i didn't say october uh stamping at the cafe is totally free there's no charge it is free because it's october it's the first month of the stamping up year free 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 and it's double cafe points right then this is sneak peek for the holiday stamp a stack that is november 5th or 6th you choose your date 12 cards to each of six designs and then a special bonus project and this one here well 
this was just a person's request to do something with the cheerful basket. And I'm sorry, but that little kitty cat poking out is too darn cute. <laughs> Yay, the kitty's the favorite. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's so cute. I saw samples on Pinterest. People were kind of just have him in front of the basket, you know, or, you know, the basket and then he's over here. And I thought, why can't he be popping out of the basket, right? So yeah, so there it is, you guys. I hope you enjoyed, yeah. <laughs> My gosh, you guys, and that's the one, <coughs> that's the one I did like in the last half hour before we met today. I actually was going to do the in color paper pumpkin, do one of the cards from there. Um, but then I went up in my Stampin' Up box and I pulled out the bundle because I had ordered it and I'm like, oh, I got to do something. And I did it like in the last 30 minutes. So I appreciate you for saying that. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to switch back to me. Why? I don't know. Because... You guys don't need to look at me, but it's always fun to, to do that. Um, so I will be on again next Wednesday, you guys. And I need you to tell me what, just like that one person did, what would you like to see? Are there any part to techniques or a particular um, a stamp set or bundle you want to see? And don't forget to go to my YouTube channel to see Stampin' Saturday so I can show you on the flurries those dyes and the different snowflakes they make. Think about checking on the joining special, 155 uh, products for 99. Um, I'll also have information, my links for my In Color Club and Cafe Coins. Um, use the host code that's listed there, you guys, for your order for October. And Cafe Coins are doubled. Two coins for every $25. So thank you so much, you guys, for stopping in. Thanks for choosing Kitty because I have to tell you, I think I really do like the Kitty myself. Oh gosh, you guys, until next time, happy stampin'.